Bitcoin investors and in traders are fearful because Bitcoin is at checks chart, $57,000. Imagine being fearful when Bitcoin is trading at $57,000, which was a wet dream just a year ago, guys. I'm gonna tell you why you should not be fearful, why you should be looking at Bitcoin and other altcoins and probably buying the dip on all markets. Let's go. Let's go. That's dope. That's dope. What's up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please, please subscribe to the channel and take that very fearful finger of yours, very fearful, and hit the like button. It won't hurt you. Just like buying Bitcoin won't hurt you. Won't hurt you. I can't believe we're going to talk about it a little bit more. You know what? I'm going to talk about it right now. I'm going to just dive into this first. Here we go. Crypto Fear and Greed Index, 33. We were uh, greedy last month at 73, by the way. Yesterday, we were at 27. How can people be fearful when Bitcoin is trading at $57,000? I almost said $37,000, and frankly, I would agree with it there, too. $57,000 Bitcoin should be like the endless party, you know, like the never, just a never-ending DJ plays 24-7, like Club 11 in Miami. Never, ever closes never closes but here we are a bunch of over emotional pansies flipping sentiment from fear to greed on 10 and 20 percent moves while the mainstream media says bitcoin's in a bear market we're in a bear market it's over we're dead come on y'all come on man come on son there's no reason to be fearful. In fact, I showed you a lot of reasons last week why I was buying the dip and why you should consider it too. And we will take a look at the charts for those reasons as well. But we do know we had this little Black Friday thing, you know, Black Friday where we all buy uh, shit we don't want because it's on sale for 25%. And now you have like 4,000% more stuff that you got for 25% less that you don't need at all. But of course, because it's called Black Friday, that works really well for when price goes down because we can call that Black Friday as well. But really, it was like an 8% drop, not that big a deal. And things have seemed to recover for, uh, since. But let's take a look now at the, uh, oh, shoot, there it is, at uh, the news. First of all, here you go. First mover Asia. We always start with first mover Asia. Got to know what Asia is doing first when they're moving. Bitcoin, all coins rebound from Black Friday plummet. There it is, Black Friday plummet. We plummeted on Black Friday. Bitcoin rose past 57K on Sunday, although investors are nervously eyeing the spread of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Every single time I see the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, I think of B2K. Hear that sexy body go bump, bump, bump. And their lead singer, Omerion. Like I see Omicron, I'm like, Omerion, baby, I want you to be my entourage. You guys know Omerion. He was in, uh, in You Got Served. Has a brother named Orion. But that's O apostrophe Ryan, Omerion and Orion, in case you guys didn't know that. But yeah, Omicron variant, which already is uh, seemingly, at least the news coming out, even from Goldman Sachs, saying maybe not uh, that bad of a strain. But I think we all know, being more serious, COVID's not going anywhere, right? We're going to continue to have variants. The huge population of the world not vaccinated it's going to continue to be a problem. And so reacting to it with your investments on a day-to-day -day basis is absolutely absurd, in my opinion. And we all know that nobody sold their Bitcoin because they saw the Omerion, vir uh, the Omerion variant, right? The Omerion variant, actually, he should call his next, if he wants to be good at marketing, Omerion should call his next album if he's going to have one, the variant, right? He should call it the variant, I think. Because that would be really good for his marketing, I think. So Omerion, the variant uh, variant coming soon. But yeah, guys, so we had a dip because of this in all markets. And of course, immediately people realized they were panicking and being over emotional and things went, went up, went up. So, but let's talk more about uh, what uh, reasonable people do when Bitcoin's dipping. They do this. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 7,002. Couldn't stop at 7,000. This had like uh, another hundred grand laying around, some some pocket change. You had to get that extra two bitcoins for four hundred fourteen million cash. 
Average price of 59000 actually above the price where it was. He was not buying this dip. He was buying before. As of 11.29, they hodl 121,044 Bitcoins acquired for $357 billion at an average price of 29534 Michael Saylor buying Bitcoin regardless of the price. He is averaging up, not averaging down. If you wait to average down on an asset like Bitcoin, you will have fun staying poor and missing the boat because it might not ever go down to the original levels that you bought it at. You average up when you get an opportunity on the dip or whenever you just have the opportunity. Michael Saylor is not trying to time the market when he gets some extra spare change, like, you know, just got a 414 million laying around, you buy some Bitcoin. That's what you do. And that's what everyone should be doing. I, I tweeted about this earlier. You know, I made the point that if you view Bitcoin, we all talk about it, Bitcoin store value, investment account for my children, long-term asset, and then those exact same people, oh my God, it's down 8%. I need to sell these levels, support resistance, triangles, it's over, right? You can't be both. You can't be both. You can't be both. You can have a trading portfolio and look at the charts for that. But like, if you're an investor and you believe and you're responsible and dollar cost averaging and buying dips, you should never even look at a chart. It doesn't matter. I know we look at charts here. That's for traders, right? It's for traders and for you to zoom out and realize where it's going as an investor. Right? That's all that this is for. You should be averaging up. Don't even worry about chart levels. You know what? I, I didn't even pull it up. I'm going to. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're almost at the end of the month. You know, and by the way, we were promised, we were promised um, uh, what we call it, Upvember. We had Uptober and we were Moonvember and Pump Sember. Yeah, we're supposed to be at 98K. Proof that uh, nobody knows shit. We're all just out here guessing about where price is going to be and when it is going to get there. And there's no model that's going to tell us exactly where price will be on any given day because we are not evil wizards who have balls and the power of seeing future things, right? But this is the monthly chart. This is the monthly chart. This goes back to 2013. We've been in this channel, you know, flipping the channel uh, resistance to support here. Yeah, and now we're kind of trading sideways. But imagine looking at this and being like, oh, damn, that's bad. That's bad. You can't look at this and, and say that's bad because it's always going up and to the right. And by the way, why did we ever, ever, for even a second, assume that we would get price going up in, this, in a month? My birthday is in this month and, and, and Emmys, and so I'm not trying to disparage November necessarily but it's the month that people like grow the mustaches like the november thing and then you don't cut your mustache and it's also no nut november when people who are pushing for abstinence say you should not have any sex for the entire month that is not the month that you expect things to go well when you look back at it so i was also wrong talking about uh, no nut november being a positive thing here we go on the weekly charts as you can see, guys, we had this horrid weekly candle rejected at the, right above the previous all-time high here, around 64000 It did get above. It did get above, but then dropping below. And a nice little bit of demand there on that candle. Well, this week was looking pretty hideous. Almost got right down to that 52944 k that we were talking about, right? Almost got there. Front ran it by about 300 bucks. Told you that was probably likely to happen. If we're going to go up, we were never going to get to 53K. We were going to either nuke through it or bounce right above it. We bounced right above it so far. And we got a hammer candle, right? Would have been nicer if the body was green or if this closed a bit higher, but that's a lot of demand. I mean, this candle closed around 57.4. It had made it all the way down to 53.3. This is a potentially bullish candle, but we need to see follow through on the next week. But regardless, we're seeing a lot of demand, right? There's a lot of buying on these candles down, indicating that we should be heading up eventually. Oh, guys, look, I did have the monthly one pulled up already. And taking a look at market structure, we got the daily low, high, higher low, higher high, potentially a higher low. Nothing to see here. In fact, anything above this low around 39,642 keeps market structure bullish. Keeps market structure bullish. So have fun staying bearish, Anon. Yeah, and you know the daily has now flipped the 56.425 potentially back to support. Maybe it'll come back and test that. But really, I think a lot of people are watching this 50 MA. You can see last time we were below it is about 11 days. Here we are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 12 days below right now. So we want to see that flip to support and heading back up. But really, for me, just nothing particularly scary here. 
nothing particularly scary. Let's take a look. Look, we have the daily did not end up printing that last bull div. 12 hour printed a beautiful bullish divergence coming out of oversold. Does not have hidden bearish divergence. Everything's still looking good there. This is why I was buying the dip. Six hour, beautiful bull div. You can go from here to here, right? Here to here, no hidden bearish divergence, lower high. Four hours, slight hidden bearish divergence, but not too worried about it. Just means the bull div is effectively canceled. Could still continue up. This should head into overbought before we see any more correction. So guys, I had nothing to worry about here. And I told you at the bottom, we were oversold on all these time frames with bullish divergence. Things were going to pop. Whether that's the whole pop that we've seen will uh, remain to be seen. And yet, you know, on the daily, we have still never made it down to oversold. So that is of slight concern. Here we go on the four hour, right? We drew this line, uh, rejected right at it. I would say that, you know, we have sort of this descending wedge, uh, broadening wedge situation going on. We want to see price break above, but this is not a bearish pattern after the drop. A bearish pattern would be something like this, right? Bull flag, a bull pennant, something like that. This is not a bearish pattern that should statistically break to the upside. Moving on from the charts of the Bitcoins. Whoa, didn't see that coming. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey expected to step down. Sources say no more Jack. What does that mean for Bitcoin and Twitter's moves towards crypto? I don't know what it means, to be quite frank. It will be interesting to see. This is breaking news. I bet if I refresh this, it'll be unbreaking. Oh, look at all that. It added the info. I knew they would stop it breaking. What's amazing is that the uh, stock, we'll talk, take a look at it in a minute, pumped hard pumped hard on this news. That's because one of their biggest stakeholders, Elliott Management, who I believe are super right wing and came in and tried to basically aggressively buy out Twitter, have wanted Jack out for quite a while. They don't think he should be in both roles and they don't like the direction of the company. A lot of people think that Jack is bad for the stock and that this should make stock go up. But I love that people, they could be right, are like, Jack leaving to live in the metaverse, Web3, not Web2. It's all about the evolution of Bitcoin. The dude is still the CEO of a major corporation of Square. It's not like he all of a sudden is like, uh, you know, hanging out on a beach, kicking it with his big beard and his Hawaiian shirts, doing, doing Jack Dorsey things, right? So, <clears throat> uh, you know, so the, the reality is remains to be seen what Jack is going to do. This may be good for Twitter, but it may be bad for the crypto side of things on Twitter. But it would be amazing to see Jack go all in now on uh crypto twitter's oh my gosh twitter stock so when i looked it was uh 52 dollars jumped from 47 but now dumping and i believe they've halted trading it looks like wow that's uh by the way when uh, people tell you how manipulated the crypto market is just look at this oh we don't like the price action let's stop we should just like let everybody take a hold. I'm not even against that. You know, five minutes for everybody to breathe, people to panic, stop panicking and figure it out. But my God, let's just halt trading. Just halt it, you know, because like uh, we don't want uh, we don't want a free market. We would hate to have that. No free market. Whew, man. Twitter, my back. I don't know if you guys know that. I, I hurt my I was playing golf for a lot. As you guys know, I kind of like tweaked something in my back. I pulled an intercostal muscle between my ribs and my back. And then I was playing in my kid's bounce house like two weeks ago and I just wrecked it. I was finally getting better rehab, massages, ice, everything. And yesterday I sneezed hard and completely, completely, completely injured myself again. I was like this. Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, my neck, my back. My neck in my back. I want 150000 but we can sell it right now out of court for 20 bucks. It also reminds me of the movie Half Baked. Dr. said I need a back out of me. Dr. said I need a back out of me. So smoke a lot. Yeah, y'all know about him. Right? But uh, yeah, so my back is kind of wrecked. If you see me doing some, some moves, it, it happens. Yeah, I, got, I hurt myself sneezing. Hurt myself on a sneeze, guys. That's what I did. So anyways, Twitter stock frozen trading right now will be interesting to see how that plays out. DeFi protocol Omicron's token jumps tenfold after namesake COVID variant emerges. It's Omerion. It's, they keep saying it wrong. OMIC, Omix surge, is perhaps an evidence of peak irrationality. Oh, you think? But we call it peak irrationality. That's stupid because this happens all the time. And so, of course, we have, uh, you know, ninth, uh, yeah, people gambling, Mr. Whale, crypto token. Named after the new COVID-19 variant, Omicron is up over 650% within three days, is now worth over 400 million. If this isn't a sign, we're in giant bubble. I believe that guy's actually like a known and proven scammer. So sorry to read that, that guy, Randy. Um, yeah. But who's rebranded like five times. 
but either way, yeah, this has, uh, you know, reeks of euphoria, but so does, I don't know, like GameStop, AMC. I mean, a stock called AMC X was shorted to the ground, which wasn't even AMC movie theaters uh, or longed, when it was, which was being shorted by Wall Street, was accidentally long because people didn't even know the difference between AMC and AMC X. This happens in every single market. And we've been seeing stuff like this. I mean, look at dog coins, right? This has been happening nonstop, basically, for like a year and a half. Year and a half, right? Yeah. So uh, this seems bad. I sneezed in the shower and killed my back at age 22. Still took nine months short. That sounds bad. Sounds bad. Yeah. Don't listen to Mr. Whale. He's a scammer and perma bear. Yeah, I, I'm not. He just happened to be in there, and uh, I'm disagreeing. I don't think we're at peak euphoria. I think this is just par for the course. But guys, don't buy shit because it has the same name as a Delta variant and a beloved uh, early 2000s R&B singer. Don't do that. Hackers are attacking cloud accounts to mine cryptocurrency, Google says. That's pretty smart. Hacked accounts were also used to find new targets and host malware and phishing scams. Of course, these are all accounts where people are like, their password was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or they didn't even put a password on it at all. But it's only 50, this news, 50 hacked Google Cloud platforms. 86 of those were used for cryptocurrency mining, which typically consumes a large amount of computing resources and storage space. Uh, guys, the, the bottom line here, this isn't a very big story. It's being presented as one, literally 50 accounts in all of like Google uh, Cloud, right? But uh, put, put like sensible passwords and 2FA on your shit. Seriously, seriously. You're going to get hacked if you have SMS authentication and you have bad password and you have bad security protocol. Get your OPSEC together, even at the most basic levels or things like this are inevitably going to happen to you. Keep it moving. Celsius CFO arrested on charges of tie to, uh, charges tied to former job at Moshe Hogig's firm. Moshe Hogig's firm. Yaron Shalem, the CFO of crypto lender Celsius, previously worked at Singularity. Uh, let's make a bigger touch. Say, guys, I would like to hear someone say that a hundred times. Singularity, singularity, singularity. Whose founder Hogig was arrested last week, money laundering and other charges, some sexual assault, a few things going on there. But guys, this has nothing to do with Celsius. Celsius had distanced themselves from this in advance saying they knew there was an investigation and, and fired the guy. But yeah, this is, you know, Moshe Hogeg had all kinds of things against him, money laundering, fraud, sexual assault, going all the way back to the ICO days. This is basically a cleanup of things that were happening in 2016, 2017. But uh, good to know that, you know, they're, they're removing the bad actors from the space. Whether he is guilty or not, I do not know. AMC and Sony team up to launch Spider-Man NFT for film premiere. Newly launched NFT promotion may have been responsible for a variety of hiccups in AMC's ticketing service. There was so much demand for these free NFTs, that, that sweet, sweet free NFTs, that it froze up their whole ticketing system. But yeah, you can use crypto basically for everything. They're doing NFTs. I mean, I sort of alluded this to this earlier. Like, this is cool. Free NFTs are awesome. But like, these will be probably like as valuable as like the broken toy you got in your Happy Meal last week. Because I know that all of you are kids at heart and go to McDonald's to get Happy Meals. Right. I mean, they're not going to be worth anything. These are like mass marketed NFTs, you know, but they basically what is interesting is how much demand there still was for it, that it basically broke them down. And it's nice to see that AMC is continuing to go big into the crypto space. I have their I have their chart right here. Actually, I've never looked at it, I realize, which is kind of strange. Here's the weekly AMC chart. And you actually got to really like it here. Right. Obviously, it had the major Wall Street, uh, Wall Street uh, bets pump, you know, the Reddit pump here from all the way from basically the bottom. It was $1.93 coronavirus. No such thing as a movie theater. Nobody going anywhere. It went all the way up to what was it? Uh, $72. Well, it should be heading back there if it can break this blue line. I'm not really big on trading this, but this is a massive bull pennant. Major consolidation after all that traffic. The question is, do, are people really, this is overvalued, obviously, at its price because it went up because of traders and not uh, fundamentals, God forbid. Uh, but yeah, I mean, holding this 36 level and break, if it can break this blue line, it should be heading up to those highs. Continuing on, Metaverse token Sand rally 75% in one week to become top 50 crypto. Sand outperforming rival Metaverse token Mana right now. But that's like, uh, you know, who cares right now? They're all going up. All going up. Metaverse is where you want to be. We're all going to be living in there. We know that. We know that we're not going to be actual people. I'm curious, what would you guys make your ideal Metaverse avatar? I think mine will be like a, a rapping wolf person. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, so uh, I'm curious what you guys would do. What you guys would do uh, with your avatar, since we're all going to get to be whoever we want in the metaverse, uh, and nobody would want to be ourselves. <laughs> Why would you ever want to be yourself? Actually, I think it's kind of ironic that the metaverse is supposed to like fix social interactions. We'll be able to interact better with our avatars and our faces. Like, why don't y'all just call a friend or like, I don't know, go to a a bar and, and talk to a person. Metaverse is awesome. But like, if you think that like you're going to be better at socially interacting in the fake world, just go practice in the real world. It's right here. It's right here. We don't need the metaverse to be able to talk to human people. It's right here. But yeah, sand sand is going absolutely nuts. The, you know, here you go. Hey, Adidas Originals, Impossible is nothing in the metaverse. What if we invite all the original thinkers and doers to design our future together? Look at that. Trying to hit up uh, Adidas and get them involved. But both of these are going to go absolutely nuts. But here's what sand has done since, I don't know, beginning of the year. Let's look at the beginning of the year. 2021, three cents. Currently $7.10. Currently $7.10 from Tian. To him, right? Absolutely a massive move. I do not love that it's continuing to rise on decreasing volume, to be quite honest. I'm not saying these won't up, but I would definitely say that, uh, you know, I'm actually, I haven't looked at this, but let's look here at RSI. Extremely overbought, definite bearish divergence on decreasing volume. To be quite honest, this looks like you might get a dip buying opportunity not too far down the road. I have no idea. Maybe FOMO will continue to carry it up. Let's look at MANA too. I haven't even looked at it. But maybe, uh, you know, these are going to run their first their first course here. And then uh, we'll see what happens after. Our same thing, right? Mana, continued bearish divergence here. Much uh, lower highs. And climbing on decreasing volume. Yeah, I think we might get a dip on Metaverse uh, sooner than later. But what do I know? They're just charged guys. Tanzania has begun preparations to launch its own central bank digital currency. Of course, because that's what governments do. Bank of Tanzania, the country's central bank, has begun the process of launching its own digital currency. Guys, we know that all countries are going to go all in on CBDCs. This is probably really bad for the people of Tanzania, but would be really good for them is when they learn to use a digital wallet as a result of their central bank digital currency, and then they just start buying Bitcoin. The final story, Spanish World Cup icon Iniesta chided over crypto tweet yeah we all know about iniesta he uh won he kicked the goal that won spain their uh first world cup 2010 they said i I couldn't find that much more about the story they earned himself a slap on the wrist from regulators when he took to twitter to say he was using the cryptocurrency exchange binance here's what he said i'm learning how to get started with binance former fc barcelona player wrote in his post yesterday Spanish National Security Market Commission replied with its own tweet saying it's best to read up on the risk of cryptocurrencies before investing in them or recommending that others do so. Kind of strange. Kind of strange because the dude's allowed to use Binance. Doesn't matter who he is. Maybe he's really doing it. Now, like if Binance paid him and he was didn't say that, I guess that could be a thing. But like, you know, how come like y'all are going to rush to be like, oh, that shit's risky. Like if he had been like, you know, like I, yeah, I've, been, uh, I've been checking out uh, Schwab. Opened a Schwab account. Uh, you know, I've been trading some stonks, investing in an IRA. Do you think that the Bank of Spain would have been like, or whoever these uh, chumps are, National Securities Market Commission would be like, investing with Charles Schwab is extremely risky. You should not invest with Charles Schwab until you understand the risk of investing with Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab, not incorporated by Charles Schwab. Right? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, doesn't make any sense. But yeah, the, you know, they still think that everything we're doing is risky, but, uh, you know, go back to Twitter stock and they freeze the trading. And you look at what happened with GameStop and they just go ahead and uh, they completely turn off the button that you would uh, use for things like, I don't know, buying. And they just allow you to sell endlessly. So yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today, but I am doing it again in three hours in six minutes, I will be back for a very special afternoon live stream. I have the CEO of Horizon Labs. You guys probably know Zen Token. We're going to do an AMA, Rob Viglione. I have to pre- actually, I don't know if it's Viglione or Viglione. That's my uh, lack of pronunciation. I'm going to find out though in advance of that. We're going to be talking about all things Horizon, talking about DeFi, interoperability, uh, privacy. Uh, guy's basically a giga chad and just taking the opportunity to to talk to him. So I hope you guys join and you can come and you can ask questions and you can hang out. Jeff would like me to have fun staying rich. Thanks, Jeff. You too. Uh, you too. Um, just looking what we got here uh, in the comments real quick. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Mm. 
<clears throat> Here we go. How many people have been wrecked by stock market? Not many, to be quite honest. Not many. Any, the, the, that's an interesting question. I get it. But really, investors have not really gotten wrecked in the stock market. You only got wrecked if it was like you're retiring in 2009. And like the whole market and your whole portfolio happened to crash in one of those few horrible moments and you lost like your retirement money. But in general, anyone with a long time horizon, the stock market's gone up even in its worst decade, 7% on average. You invest in stocks, you generally beat inflation and do not get wrecked. You get wrecked when you try to trade and trading, you get wrecked no matter what market it is. Makes literally no difference. Makes no difference. Thank you for calling the bottom. Hey, listen, I'm not saying it's the bottom yet, but it was definitely a bottom. It was definitely a bottom. Guys, thank you. Please, 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 please come hang out at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be epic. I don't. I haven't done many of these live conversations uh, in quite a while, actually. We have the podcast, obviously, so I'm really looking forward to having another person here to bounce ideas and thoughts off of instead of just having to relentlessly talk to myself. I will see all you guys later. Peace. That's dope.